Hi guys, welcome to Watch Hobbyist Channel with me, Wayne, and today we are going to be looking at this Wear Sandstrom dress watch. Now, I say Wear Sandstrom because I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Um, I am useless at pronunciation of anything. I come from Manchester in England where anything I try to say just doesn't sound right in terms of foreign languages. So I apologise to any Swedish people listening right now that probably want to shoot me. However, um, it's better than what I thought it was originally, which was Su Sandström. Um, so when I've looked into it, where Sandström seems to be something like where it's at. Now, that's from a person that, let's face it, the main other brand I know from Sweden is going to be IKEA, which I thought was IKEA for many, many years. So, um, you know, maybe I, I need to really sort of go to Sweden at some point and, and learn some pronunciation. Getting off that, this watch is something I've wanted to show you for a while. I've had it for a few weeks. Um, basically, I, the reason that I haven't shown it you yet too much is because I really wanted to get to know this watch. Now, I have actually recorded the review a few times and I actually got it bang on, really happy with it, and my camera failed. So it's come along now, but I think it's good because it's given me some real time to get to know the watch and to really understand where this watch would fit into a collection like mine and also compare it to previous watches that I've owned, which I think is a, a viable thing. Uh, you know, I think that's always good to sort of get a, a, a base level of where I think this watch stands in the watch market today in 2018 as I record this review. Now, the watch itself came about because I was looking for something dressy. Now, I already had a Cartier Tank Solo, which I absolutely loved, but I wanted something a bit different, so I've actually sold the Cartier anyway. Um, but this recently came about, and it's it's just a, a, a very sort of interesting design to me. I wanted something that was quite plain, but still had some good sporty features like water resistance. I always like a watch to be quite water resistant if it's possible. You just never know if I'm going to end up sort of in an environment where, you know, you're on holiday and you just forget about the watch or something like that. Uh, it's on your wrist and then you go for a swim and forget. I've, I've done things like that in the past. I'm not saying it happens all the time, but I just like a watch that's water resistant, just like and I like phones that have some water resistance as well. Um, you know, it seems like a, a reasonable thing in 2018 to be asking for, and this watch does. But I didn't know anything about the brand, I didn't know anything about the watch, I didn't know anything at all about them. So, first thing I want to do before I introduce you to all that, I'm just going to place the watch down there, is so I just want to show you the packaging. Now, it's a very interesting box, it's made of the most solid wood I can ever imagine. Wood. It reminds me of what you find sort of uh, the old ship chronometers in uh, when you see them you know in museums and things like that it looks like that type of thing and that's probably not too far off in terms of what uh, where Sandstrom actually had in in mind for uh, for this watch because the royal capital itself which is what the watch is called is basically uh, sort of um, commemorating the history of Swedish watchmaking uh, as far back as 1852 there was uh, awards won by Swedish watchmakers uh, one including uh, Victor Kohlberg um, and basically they won like the best by far uh, for a chronometer in Greenwich so that's pretty good going so Sweden does have a, a watchmaking history and this watch is to sort of commemorate that sort of thing um, However, it's also a very, very interesting box in the way that it's designed. So, uh, first of all, you have this first layer, which opens up with, you can see the reflection of it, but there's a gold-plated sort of wear Sandstrom um, uh, plaque uh, within a leather sort of area. So, you, can, you can't really see it. I've not got the, uh, the, the wide angle on the camera that's going to make it happen. But then, if we press this button, can actually open up this section as well and that's how you would get to the watch initially. Um, this is all very very nicely made, I think it's also very sort of fine leather, it feels like it's a very nice quality uh, feel to the materials inside the box and it weighs an absolute ton. So this is not a hollow wood box, this is a solid wooden box with gold plated uh, hardware on it. It looks great. I think it looks really, really good. I'm not sure if this is for the steel watch. Maybe this is for the uh, the gold ones that they do. I don't know. But I'm sure even if the steel one has different uh, hardware on it, it'd just be steel instead of gold. But I could be completely wrong anyway. Um, the watch obviously then appears to you and you see this, which to me is a really beautiful 
classy, elegant design. It's not flashy. It's not for somebody that wants something to really show off. This is understated and I like that. Um, there is nothing wrong with an understated watch in my opinion and the way that everything is finished on this watch really works very very well. I must admit that I think the logo is quite large for such a watch. Um, I think it possibly stands out a little bit too much um, but it kind of still gels with the sort of ethic of the with the colouring, the font used. I think it still works you know nicely. Um, the dial itself obviously we can see has like a sunburst effect to it so you can see the sunburst, sunburst effect going on um, probably quite a lot of reflections in here today because I have a few more lights on than usual um, but you can also see that on a second level is the subdial which is a seconds subdial and it's probably going crazy on my camera because that creates an effect called moire but um, you can see how it's also sunburst in its own way which interacts differently with the dial so we have a, a, a different level of dial here so two level dial we also have applied markers to the dial so I think that works really really well the logo and the Stockholm print at the bottom is just that it is printed onto the dial directly but I've looked at this dial under a loop and believe me it looks as good as you would imagine uh, very very high quality finish to the dial to all the case in fact as well the case has a satinized finish around the bezel it has satinized lugs and satinized sides but it also has polished chamfered sections as well there's a lot of different finishes going on here um, the crown itself is polished um, I would prefer a smaller crown, I mean it's always great having a large crown because you can wind it that easy um, but I think a smaller crown would work on this because it does actually sort of overhang the case a little bit um, but I, I think a smaller crown will work better but at the same time this by no means stands out and looks ridiculous it, it's just that um, it's just quite large for this type of watch um, but I think that's probably more a problem with the case because it's so incredibly thin I mean this watch is actually thinner than the Patek Philippe Aquanaut that I owned previously um, which is quite a feat for an automatic watch you know that was automatic as well but it's really really hard to sort of find these very thin automatic movements so that's something I'm going to talk about shortly is the movement but um, I'm just going to talk you through the rest of the watch as well so this has uh, a leather strap fitted uh, there are different versions that you can buy you can buy a version with a blue dial uh, there's silver dials going on black dials this is a grey rhodium dial which I hopefully you can make out on the camera um, but it's a lovely high quality thick leather strap um, it has two strap keepers one is fixed in place and then the other one can be moved to, to, you know, as to how much you actually have on the overhang of the strap. The thing I don't like about the strap, unfortunately, is the clasp. Um, it's not that I don't like it, it's just that I think it looks a little bit too sporty. This is something I would expect to see on a sports watch more than a more dressy watch like this. And the reason is really the design of the clasp. Now, obviously, we have thick leather going on here, so... There are limits to how thin you can make the clasp to, uh, you know, in terms of it actually still locking into place. But I think really this is an area that could probably be improved. Not for its feel, not for its security, I think, and certainly not for its weight. It's a very lightweight clasp. But I think just for its overall aesthetic and design, I think you have this beautiful, elegant case for the watch. Um, but the clasp is perhaps just a little bit... Um, less elegant than I would expect. It does still have the branding on there, uh, so you can see the branding. It also has this nice area here where you can see the strap. So um, it's a very interesting design of, of you know, aesthetically, but I just think from the side is where it actually sort of um, misses the mark for me personally. But when you actually close the watch there, well, that's how it looks sort of closed up and. I have to say it is very comfortable, nothing digs into your wrist. Um, I've worn this watch a fair amount uh, because I really wanted to get to understand it and to know it um, and it's even on a hot day very very comfortable. Now the next thing we really need to talk about is the brand itself. So 
Um, the brand, um, Wear Sandstrom, again, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, they came about in 1986. Uh, there was a Mr. Wear, Mr. Sandstrom. Uh, they came together, created this technical, uh, you know, feat of creating a watch, um, building a watch brand, and this is where we're at now. So we have this Royal Capital model, there's other chronograph models, there's GMT models. They have all sorts of different ones, but the one that stands out in the range for me is the Royal Capital. I think this um, this is the direction that the brand has gone best from what I've seen from the pictures, although quite often when you hold something in your hands it's very different. Unfortunately there aren't too many uh, dealers outside of Sweden so it's going to be hard to see the rest of the range so easily. Um, but for me this particular watch suits the brand very very well. Um, they do a gold version which uh, I think only 50 pieces were created and there's been a few different ones of those so 50 pieces per dial type of thing. Um, in terms of value for money I'm not saying this is a cheap watch um, at all, but I think it's well priced for its sector. There are alternatives, of course. Um, you know, companies like Grand Seiko, companies like Patek Philippe, dare I say, and I will get onto why. Um, but there are also Moser, plenty of there's plenty of companies out there now. It's a very hard market to um, stand out in, of course, because there's so many different watch manufacturers. But where I think this brand has gone right is in the movement. So the movement in here is isn't not in-house. First of all, let's get that out of the way. Elephant out of the room. Everybody expects an in-house movement, blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, all right, I understand that uh, an in-house movement can sometimes be interesting and a, and a benefit but it's not always the be all and end all uh, as much as people think it is and in this case particularly I think it's worked really well as a partnership with Valsha. Now I'm just going to try and turn my camera settings down a little bit so I can show you hopefully without too much reflection how nicely finished this movement is. Um, for me personally I think it's one of the nicest movements I've ever seen up in you know in the flesh sort of thing in the metal um, it has the case back which still allows 100 meters of water resistance and you get to see that beautiful micro rotor you get to see the beautiful engine turning that's gone on within where the micro rotor lives uh, all the cots de Genève uh, sorry for any French people listening I can't pronounce anything um, but um, I think it just suits I just think it suits the watch very, very well. So I'm just trying to show you all the all the different angles and facets uh, showing you there through the class. But um, we don't have too much text going around around the around the bezel on the back either. You know, I think it's nice and sort of quite clear, quite clean uh, in terms of its design. And this movement um, is one that is not to be frowned upon. And I will tell you why because. I'm just going to pop that down for now because I've been holding that for a few minutes. But basically, I, a few years ago, had the opportunity to meet up with Flavion from uh, Parmigiani, a lovely, lovely man. And he took me and my friend uh, around the manufacturer. Uh, around the manufacturer. And it was very, very interesting to see what was going on in there. Um, the, you know, the, the, a lot of the watch market now, you tend to think that only in-house movements are, are worth having. It's not the case at all. There are plenty of movement manufacturers in Switzerland. Some are better than others. And you have the crazy sort of scenario of like ETA, which produces probably hundreds of thousands of movements a year. But you also have uh, smaller companies. You have companies that produce their own movements and are, are purely movement makers but they only produce on a very very small scale. Now Valsha being part of the uh, Parmigiani group I actually had the opportunity to go around you know their manufacturer and, and where they make these movements and where they produce uh, things under microscopes and stuff like that and I was absolutely blown away and for this watch to have a movement created by that company I think um, absolutely shows the the quality that we have going on here um, if you obviously most people haven't been to that manufacturer um, if they had 
uh, they would see what I mean. But let's just say it's very surprising what some companies say is in-house that isn't. Um, because there are plenty of movement manufacturers out there. Let's just say that certain components and things like that are produced. Um, I don't want to say too much because I was actually asked not to. Um, but it's amazing how much you know companies like Voucher are actually really required in the watchmaking world. There are plenty of brands out there that don't make hundreds of thousands of watches per year and they don't have the investment capital to go creating their own movements. It just doesn't happen. Um, think how much investment is needed to sort of R&D something like that. So you then go to uh, an outsourced company that produces a good quality movement and that's what you end up with here. And the movement in question here, it's it's not the on paper like the it's not like the greatest specs. It has twenty one thousand six hundred beats per hour. It's forty eight hour power reserve, but it's certainly very comparable to other watches in its sort of sector. And therefore, I don't see anything wrong with this at all. You have the micro rotor going on. Basically, that's part of the fifty four hundred series movement anyway. Uh, 5400 series is an evolved version of the 5300 series from Valsha. Um so this is the 5401. This has uh, sort of plenty of work going on with the bridges and everything. Um, it depends how many units are ordered, I think, um, as to the amount of detail that is given to um, the buyer of those of those movements. Um, but in this case, obviously enough were bought that plenty of detail could be put into the movement. So. I think, for me personally, I think this is a really good combination of, of the movement itself versus the watch. Um, and in terms of overall feel, um, and I mean that, like overall feel, you know what it's like when you, you can see a watch in pictures, but when you actually hold a watch, when you actually put it on your wrist, the overall sort of experience of that, honestly, the only thing I've ever had that's been similar has been my Patek Aquanaut. And I love Patek, I think they're incredible. Um, they have problems as well, believe me, in terms of like their uh, complications and the quality of the uh, the QC basically sometimes. But um, so nothing's perfect even within house movements, and that goes to show even more that you know an outsourced movement is not always a bad thing. With this type of movement, you could add a, a chrono module to it from Dubar de Poix, um that sort of thing. So that's when you start to get what like Udemar do, where they have chrono modules. Um, so a lot of these brands, you know, they don't all have in-house movements and therefore I think as a combination of allowing you to sell a watch at a certain price, I think this is going to probably help with that. Um, the price of this watch, I'm sure you all want to know, is around about $7,000 I think. Now, I don't know what price it is in say Europe and places like that because I couldn't really find the prices too much on the internet. I probably should have inquired more, but I also think I'm pretty right around about seven thousand dollars. It's probably in the region of five to six thousand pounds equivalent here in the UK. Probably around about six to seven thousand euros, um, you know, in Europe anyway, uh, or maybe between five and seven thousand euros for the steel one. There is a gold version which I believe is around about thirteen thousand pounds. But, you know, if you start to compare that to some other watches, it does actually look like a, a reasonable value. Um, I'm not saying it absolutely is, but let me just sort of compare that you can get an Amiga for much more money than a gold one of these. Um, so, you know, it's that kind of thing. It just depends on exactly what you're after. Um, not everybody's going to love this watch. Um, it's probably a bit too modern for some people. I mean, the, the company coming around about in 1986, some people like a lot more heritage. Um, also, the manufacturer voucher, voucher for the movement, they started in 2003. You know, there's a lot of modern technology in here versus huge amounts of history. But history is history. It takes a long time to create. And we have to support these these modern watchmakers and modern uh, movement manufacturers as well. So I personally think that this is a really good package overall. Um, I can't sort of really say that it isn't at all. I'm very pleased with it. It would be a happily I would happily own this watch uh, without a doubt. I love the detail going on in the dial, in the bezel, um, the movement itself, being able to see that and seeing the quality of it, knowing that the watch is 100 meters water resistant. Obviously the strap limits that in this case, but at least the watch is. Um, and I just think it's a very classy, elegant watch. Now, 
One thing I always do in my videos is I give you the sizes, dimensions of everything. Um, I'll show you a wrist shot as well. Um, so just to give you some ideas, so we have here, hopefully you can see it. Uh, so I'll try and, <laughs> um, there we go, that's better. Right, so 47 millimeters lug to lug. Uh, so we are talking sort of, um, yeah, about 47-ish. Um, we are talking Rolex Submariner territory in terms of length, to give you an idea if you have something like that. Um, in terms, oh sorry, I've just knocked the camera, but in terms of the um, diameter, so um, I believe it's actually 40 millimeters, so I'm probably doing this from the, long, the wrong point. It's a very funny measurement diameter, but yeah, around about 40 in that sort of region from the lug to the other lug in terms of diagonal measurement. And then in terms of thickness, we will see if what I've been given is correct. Yeah, so around about eight millimeters. Um, I was told it was a bit thinner than that, actually. Yeah, we can get it thinner. It's a, what I didn't realize is it's actually a bit of a domed crystal. Um, so the case itself could be as thin as that. Um, 7.3-ish, so a very, very, very thin movement, but I didn't realise until just doing this now that there is actually the very slightest dome to the crystal, which is always good for strength uh, on a thin crystal as well, um, So and good when it's 100 metres water resistant as well. Um, the things that I would say I dislike a little bit about the watch, um, and there's not many things, but the first thing would be I'm not a massive fan of the, the logo being so big on the dial. I'm not a massive fan of the crown because the crown does overhang the case a little bit. And I'm not a massive fan, as you know, of the clasp. But everything else, I think, works brilliantly. And I'm just going to show you a wrist shot now. So this is my wrist of, I think, just under 7 inches, like 6 and 3 quarter inches, something like that. Don't always take that measurement either as absolutely set in stone because your wrist expands over time uh, when it's a hot day like it is today. It's really, really hot here in England at the minute. Um, but that is how it wears on my wrist. And you can see the clasp does sort of look quite chunky on my wrist. There's no denying that at all. But in terms of thickness and in terms of looks and elegance and just overall aesthetics, I think this is a really, really beautiful thing. Um, and it's definitely a watch that I hope to see, or certainly a brand that I hope to see more of across Europe, across the world. They seem sort of mostly concentrated on Sweden at the moment, but there are other places you can buy them. Um, but I would definitely recommend this. And also from a communications point of view, dealing with the brand, how easy going they've been because of my camera breaking, how easy going they were in the first place to sort of actively want to send me the watch as well for review. I really appreciate all that. And I think they've just been a really nice, uh, it's been a really nice experience overall. I'd actually, I would love to go to the manufacturer at some point and just see how it's all put together, you know, and see the quality of the work that goes on because I would imagine that it is every bit as good as I imagine it would be, um, which is very high quality, very good feel, very good aesthetics, and uh, just a, a more unique proposition than just going into your local store and picking up whatever else you think is, is a rival to this watch for you personally. So thanks for watching this review. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please make sure you give me a thumbs up if you did like it. Please make sure you also subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you know when I, re uh, I review another watch. Check out my Instagram so you can see watches like this uh, on there in terms of pictures. Sometimes I do little videos as well. And I will see you again very soon.